there are two chambers that are referred to as the atria and they look a little bit like um, ear flaps on the top here sometimes they're referred to as oracles which also means ear this is where the blood is returning back to the heart there is one on the right side and there is one on the left side and then the blood will go from those atria and when i say atria think of like a hotel walking into the atrium which is the first entry point into the building this is the first entry point into the heart then from there the blood is going to go into more muscular structures made up of cardiac muscle that they're called ventricles and i often say think of the heart as a v and the portions that are closest to that v we refer to them as ventricles now there is a right side of the heart and there is a left side of the heart and the reason i know that i'm looking at the um, ventral side of the heart the side that if you open up the chest cavity or the thoracic cavity this is what you would see is because of this diagonal line right here now that diagonal line is called the interventricular groove and inter means between ventricular would mean ventricles so this is the separation of the right ventricle and the left ventricle on the front side of the heart this is diagonal on the back side of the heart the interventricular groove is actually more vertical there's also a lot more fat on the posterior side of the heart um, that separates the atria from the ventricles the separation between these two is referred to as the atrioventricular groove because it's between the atria and the ventricles so let's talk about all of these vessels coming off the top of the heart so any blood vessel that takes blood away from the heart is referred to as an artery now there are some specialized names for the arteries that are directly attached to the heart and then they branch off and we start calling them arteries but if we are focusing on the right side of the heart, let's talk about where blood comes into it first and then where it goes. Any blood vessel that is returning blood to the heart is referred to as a vein. Now we have a lot of the vessels on this back side of the heart. So let's focus on if we have a drop of blood that has been used and it's on its way back to the heart. If it's coming from the upper body or the thoracic cavity, it will return through the superior vena cava, which is this pipe right here that I'm putting uh, the probe in. If the blood is returning through or from the abdominal cavity or the lower extremities, it's gonna come through the inferior vena cava, which is this one where I just put the probe through and the probes are actually touching inside the atria. Now, once we are in the right atrium, that blood is going to travel through a valve. And the reason valves are used is because it prevents backflow of blood if they function properly. From the right atria to the right ventricle, it's referred to as the tricuspid valve. In the next video, I'm gonna show you the internal structures in more depth, but again, we go from right atria through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle. Now, when the heart contracts, it actually contracts as one unit where the top will contract and then it will continue down to the apex of the heart and back up, it kind of is this nice fluid motion. When the ventricles contract, that forces blood out the arteries now there's another valve that would prevent blood from going back in and these are referred to as semi-lunar valves the right ventricle will pump blood through this vessel right here this is referred to as the pulmonary trunk the valve that's between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk is referred to as the pulmonary semi-lunar valve so if I follow where this is going, the pulmonary trunk 
will branch into a left pulmonary artery and this is the right pulmonary artery and then it will go to the lungs drop off the carbon dioxide pick up the oxygen it will return through the pulmonary vein which is just inferior to the pulmonary arteries and that will return the blood to the left atria which is right here then that left atria will let the blood drain into the left ventricle through a valve called the bicuspid or the mitral valve. And once the blood is in the left side of the heart, it's fully oxygenated and it can go to the, the systemic circuit, which is all the other tissue in the body. The valve and artery actually run behind the pulmonary system. So... If you look right about here, this is where the start of the artery that's going to the systemic circuit starts. This is called the aorta. The aorta will branch and this top two branches. This is the brachiocephalic artery, which will branch further up into the neck and go towards the right subclavian artery, which is basically the right arm and then the carotid arteries, which would be the ones that go up into the neck and the head. Then the second tube that we branch off into, this is the left subclavian artery. This is gonna take it to the left shoulder and arm. And then as we keep going around this arch, so it kind of goes up and back down, this opening right here will continue down to the lower extremities and through the thoracic and abdominal cavity. And this is going to turn into the descending aorta. They get named based on where they're going. So then the blood will get delivered to whatever tissue needs it. And when the blood gets depleted of oxygen, it will return back through the vena cava, depending on where it started, back into the right atrium and start the process all over again. Now, while I have the external portion of the heart exhibited, in the fetal pig, you will notice that there is an attachment between the pulmonary artery or the pulmonary trunk and the aorta because a fetal pig doesn't have functioning lungs yet. So there is a bypass that allows blood that came from the placenta to go directly to the aorta and out to the systemic circuit. There are remnants of that in the adult heart still, where it's basically a ligament. In the fetal pig, this would have been a functioning duct or tube, and this would have been referred to as the ductus arteriosus, or an arterial duct, or an artery duct, this turns into a ligament shortly after birth, so that way the blood goes to where it's supposed to, to pick up oxygen instead of using the placenta. But the remnants of it are referred to as the ligamentum arteriosum. So this would be the remnants of what was in the fetal pig.